This is the Genesis GV70, and if you live in North America, you might be familiar with it. But us Brits are only just starting to get acquainted with Hyundai's luxury sub-brand, and the GV70 is its answer to the likes of the Audi Q5 and BMW X3. That's some serious competition, and today we're going to see if it can take them on. We're also going to look at the GV70 saloon sibling, the G70. But before I go any further, why not give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. I want to start off with pricing because it's actually really hard to judge. Now, this thing on the outside screams opulence and a lot of people actually think that this looks quite similar to a Bentley. However, you know that it's actually built by the same company that also makes such hits as the Kona and the i30. Not exactly the most exciting cars. Well, this thing comes in at around £40,000, meaning it just undercuts the BMW X3 and Audi Q5. So how about the saloon version? Well, the G70 starts at around £33,000, putting it on par with a BMW 3 Series and an Audi A4. Now, those prices are without options, and there are a few option packs that add on things like a bit more interior tech and luxury and also some driver assistance. So you can pay closer to 50 grand for one of these if you really want to. But it's worth bearing in mind that this is also going up against German cars. And if we know anything, it's the Germans love an extensive options list. But now we need to get on to the design because just look at this thing. This is one of the most striking vehicles I have ever seen. And it looks a lot more expensive than its price tag suggests. And I guess a big part of that is this massive and very glitzy grille. Now, it is worth pointing out that while this does look like it would be made of metal, like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, it is actually plastic. And that makes a lot of sense because you're not actually paying a lot of money for this car. But still, I think it looks magnificent. I also love the way the badge has been put on the bonnet as well because you have these almost vapor trail like feature that's been molded into the bonnet and makes the car look like it's in motion when it's not. And speaking of cool lines, we've got this beautiful crease down the side of the car that connects the grille to the side window, but my favorite crease of all, and I think this might be my favorite crease on a modern car, is this one right here, which kind of starts off really thin, but it actually almost gets like a 3D effect the further you go back to the car, and it gets a little bit thicker and then thinner towards the rear. Now what that does is it not only gives the car a little bit of muscle, even though it's a very smooth looking car, but in my opinion, we have more of a shooting brake style SUV rather than something that is designed to basically just get as much packaging and kids in the back. So I don't have a family, I'm not very domesticated. Now, not only does that give it a slightly more muscular look when the car itself is actually very smooth, but it also brings the overall line of the car sloping downwards towards the rear, because not only does this line move down towards the back of the car, but you also have it with the roof line as well. So from the side, this thing looks less like a conventional SUV and more like a shooting brake on stilts. The back end isn't quite as interesting. You still get these split tail lights, which are distinctly Genesis, Genesis uh, and I think they look really good. You also got a small little wing. Now, depending on which model line you go for, you actually get a different rear bumper. Now, this is the luxury line, so we get a design that's more opulent and Bentley mimicking. Whereas if you go for the sport line, you get a slightly different rear bumper with circular exhausts if you go for the petrol car. But because this is the diesel, they're tucked away. But if you're like me and you prefer a saloon over an SUV, then you'll want to check out the G70. And we've got it right here. Now, these cars are actually positioned as almost like sisters. The G70 is the saloon, GV70 is the SUV, but there are some subtle differences. 
The GV70 is a brand new model. They've never made it before. But the G70 was actually sold in markets like North America. And the model that you see here is actually a facelift. So there are some subtle differences, particularly on the inside. We've still got the Genesis split headlights at the front, and I think it gives the car some real aggression. We've got the sport model here, which means you get this kind of dark surrounding to the grille and lots of gloss black, but you can get something a little bit snazzier throughout the rest of the range. Round the side, 19 inch wheels down here, but again, there are lots of different designs to choose from. And it's a side profile of the car that I find quite interesting because while we have these really defined lines on the GV70, here it's much more subtle and kind of blends into a much smoother body. I like it, but I also think that the GV70 just looks a little bit more interesting compared to the saloon sibling. And at the back, we also have the split tail lights and these large oval exhausts, which are real, but you've got these two smaller exhausts on the inside. If you were to go online and buy a GV70 today, you would have two engine options to choose from. One is a 2.5 litre turbo petrol engine producing 304 horsepower. And there's the tried and true 2.2 litre turbo diesel producing 210 horsepower. Now both come with all wheel drive systems and eight speed automatic gearboxes. Now, if you live in other markets, you can also get a 3.5 litre petrol engine producing 380 horsepower. But as of the time of recording, that's not coming to the UK because Genesis thinks nobody's going to buy them. And also it's probably due to emission regulations as well. As for electrification, none of the lineup currently comes with either a hybrid or plug-in hybrid version. However, I wouldn't be surprised if that changes in the near future. And one more thing I wanted to point out, when you close the bonnet, most bonnets sit flush with the bodywork, but on the GV70, you get this weird little lip as if it overhangs the front of the body. I'm not sure if I like it or not. This is a seriously luxurious cabin. And the design is stunning, mixing in these really sleek lines with a minimalist design that doesn't resort to replacing all the buttons with touch panels. So it's actually intuitive to use without flooding you with complicated controls. The steering wheel is beautiful if a little chunky to hold and you get proper physical buttons and really well damped rocker switches. The sport model comes with a three spoke steering wheel that looks like it comes with haptic controls, but they're actually still physical buttons. So again, it's a bit easier to use. Meanwhile, the climate settings have these razor sharp graphics and are controlled either using touch controls or these physical dials either side. And the leather seats are very comfortable, but in all fairness, I prefer the quilted leather over this range topping Nappa leather. The seats are really comfortable and this is the top spec Nappa leather, but in all fairness, I prefer the mid range quilted leather, but it just feels a little bit more luxurious. And the great thing about Genesis being a sub brand of Hyundai means that you get some really good tech in here as well. And it's all accessed through this 14.5 inch mega infotainment system. And unlike a lot of cars, it's properly responsive and the graphics are crystal clear. Meanwhile, the optional digital instrument cluster has a really cool feature where it has this 3D effect that tracks your eyes. So no matter where you're looking, it'll always be in the right position to give you that 3D feel. And like most cars today, you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with wireless charging for your smartphone, but you can't get wireless connectivity for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You still have to use a cable. And if you jump in the back, headroom is really good. Although I do find it a little bit tight for legroom. And in the boot, you've got 540 liters of storage space. And to put that into perspective, the Audi Q5, BMW X3 and Mercedes GLC have about 10 liters more, but the difference isn't all that big and there's still plenty of room in the back to store stuff. Back in the G70 saloon, and while we have mostly the same tech that we get in the GV70, it doesn't feel quite the same. And because the GV70 is a new model, we get that lovely new interior. Whereas because this is a facelift, it's got the old cars 
layout, it's just had a few little tweaks here and there. And that means you don't have the same steering wheel design that you get on the GV70. We have more physical buttons on here rather than that kind of slightly sleeker system. And also you don't have that beautiful flowing dashboard that you get in the GV. Instead, it looks just a little bit more basic and a bit more old fashioned. That being said though, we've got quilted leather in here, which feels really very lovely. And the build quality is absolutely superb, including all the physical buttons. I love seeing physical buttons just doesn't quite feel up to that luxury level of the GV70. So first impressions of the GV70, now we're on the road. And just like its exterior, which screams luxury and opulence, the drive is mostly pretty much the same. So we're gonna start things off in comfort mode and see what it's like. So I'm on a really bumpy road at the moment with lots of ups and downs and it's doing a pretty good job of ironing out all these little crests. I've been on a few other cars down here where it's kind of thrown you around a little bit, but it's all pretty smooth in the GV70. Where it does become a little bit strange though is when you're on a really rough road surface. So no matter which driver mode you're in, comfort or especially sport, it just feels a little bit rough. It kind of finds all the little ruts in the road and somehow manages to put that through into the cabin. And so that kind of mixed element also goes with the engine as well. Now I'm driving the 2.2 litre diesel and when you're cruising, it's actually very quiet and even at idle, it's pretty quiet as well. Plenty of punch with 200 and 10 horsepower and because it's a diesel it's nice and torquey too even though we've got a zero to 60 time that's closer to eight seconds where it starts to feel a tad unrefined though is when you put your foot down and you can just hear the gruff and grumbleness from the diesel engine and it's by no means intrusive but it's just something that genesis is z -z 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 German rivals have really hit the nail on the head with and the GV70 just feels as though it's perhaps a step behind in that regard. There's definitely a bit of laziness with the steering and can make the car feel quite big but then again Genesis is after that more luxurious ride something that's maybe a little bit more civilized and relaxed and I kind of felt like the steering and controls all actually work really well together in Please that respect. I don't want to say command Genesis, I and I or whoever you are. Is it because I said Genesis? Sorry, please repeat your last command. Oh, shut up. And I think it's at this point we should head over to the G70 to see what that's like. In the G70, and for the most part, it's pretty damn good to drive. I think what stands out to me the most is the way that this thing steers. It is really responsive. Just the smallest little movement on the steering wheel results in a change of direction. And while there's not plenty of feel through the wheel and it's pretty light, even when you put it in Sport Plus, it does make the car feel quite agile and quite nimble. So I'm on a relatively smooth back road at the moment and I've got it in Sport Plus, which adds a little bit of weight to the steering and sharpens up the throttle response. And it genuinely feels like quite a fun car to throw around. The only issue comes in though when you put it back into comfort and it doesn't really work with the bumps in the way that you would expect a family saloon to. So in a BMW 3 Series, it's really good at basically adapting to any road surface and also being a lot of fun to drive. Whereas this thing, I find that when you get to some bumps, it can kind of throw you up in the air a little bit and the car can get confused about what it actually wants to do. But for the most part, it is actually quite a comfortable car. Yeah, it's pretty quick in a straight line, but I think it kind of wants to be driven a little bit more leisurely. And I think that's kind of what would separate it from the BMW 3 Series. There's definitely a driver's car underneath here, but I think you're gonna enjoy it a lot more as a bit of a cruiser.
Back in the GV70, and you know what? I actually think that if I had to choose between these two cars, the saloon version or the SUV, the GV70 is the one that really does feel like a superior product. And that's probably because it is a brand new car. We have a very different interior, but I also think that the brief matches up a little bit better as well. It's really, really smooth to drive, and while there are a few little jiggles that you can get at lower speeds, it's mostly a well-sorted car, and I can't really say that for the G70. I kind of feel like the G70 needs a bit more work compared to the GV. But this, of course, is just a first drive. We'd need the cars for a little bit longer to give our proper definitive verdict. But before we get them in, why not in the meantime, head over to yesauto.co.uk for plenty more Genesis news and reviews.